Welcome and thanks for tuning in to Bravo Kent State Arts. I'm your host, Effie Tsengis. On this month's show, we will take a tour of Kent State's printmaking shop in the School of Art. Now, if you are like me, you perhaps aren't quite sure what the term printmaking really means or even what the exact process is all about. Well, today, Michael Loderstedt, head of the program and a master printer himself, along with one of his students, will give us perhaps a small glimpse into the world of printmaking. We'll also be treated to an amazing concert in the Hugh A. Glasser School of Music. The concert, which took place this past summer, was sponsored by the Coolest Foundation and featured the talents of nationally recognized clarinetist David Schifrin performing Poulenc Sonata for clarinet and piano. Then finally, we'll meet some graduate students from our School of Art who currently have some of their work on display in the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundations Gallery, located in Hudson. Printmaking is considered by many a somewhat unknown fine art. The distinction between fine art prints and limited edition prints, which are actually commercially reproduced prints, is not always easy to make. The printmaking studio at Kent State is overseen by master printer and professor Michael Loderstedt, who will have his student demonstrate the process of the intaglio style of printmaking. Now I'm no printmaker, so let's hear from master printmaker and professor Michael Loderstedt, and we'll enjoy his student's demonstration of this very interesting fine art. Hi, my name is Michael Loderstedt. I'm a professor at art at Kent State University, and I teach printmaking. Printmaking is an original form of art uh, where artists create unique works of art on paper. Um, we, in we incorporate um, traditional technologies like etching, uh, lithography, screen printing, and relief, woodcut processes, to make works that can be additioned in small numbers, and they're essentially original works of art in which we've worked on the plates and the matrices, matrices ourselves. So they're uh, a way in which a collector or uh, 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 an audience can see more of an artist's work than uh, one uh, uh, unique painting or one unique sculpture. Prints allow uh, a greater audience to experience the work of an artist through uh, multi multiples. Most printmakers work on a unique work that's that's designed and executed in that form only. So, for example, Picasso's etchings, he always worked from drawings, certainly, but made them into completely unique works of art, uh, unlike his paintings. So, um, there are also artists that work exclusively in prints, uh, like uh, myself and others. Andy Warhol probably is the most uh, recognized. Andy Warhol uh, worked in screen printing, um, and uh, made many, uh, you know, used popular imagery and was able to communicate his ideas through uh, uh, essentially appropriating images of our culture. Uh, Robert Rauschenberg, uh, Jasper Johns, um, uh, Lichtenstein um, uh, uh, are one of, one of the most famous um, uh, artists from the op art period. Uh, Richard Anaskevich, who was a student at Kent State University, also makes prints. Um, so there's a number of artists who have uh, uh, worked in other media that uh, most, most fairly well-recognized artists have made at one point or another in their career of print. Uh, my name's Abby Kish, and I'm a double major in art education, and then my second major is fine arts, drawing and printmaking focus. Um, I'm a junior this fall, and where I'm from originally, I'm from Parma, Ohio, just 10 minutes out of Cleveland. So. The process of intaglio is the printmaking technique where an artist prepares the printing plate by cutting, etching, or engraving an image onto the plate. As you'll see, ink is then applied and paper is pressed onto the plate by way of a hand-run printing press. The finished print is pulled from the plate. Often the first three or four prints are different than the rest of the edition and therefore they are called artist 
proofs. The number of prints then pulled from one plate is referred to as an addition. I'm most proud of the students, really, and the impact they've had in the greater world. Um, many of the area print shops are founded uh, and run by former alumni from the School of Art uh, printmaking program. Um, Liz Moggins, uh, who's the director of Zygo Press in Cleveland, uh, Robert Beckman, who's the director of Artist Image Resource in Pittsburgh, all of these people uh, had a common uh, taproot of having studied printmaking here at Kent. And uh, what's exciting about um, these other shops and, and sort of disseminating what they've learned here is that they've taken uh, their knowledge and, and helped uh, countless artists uh, produce new graphic work. So that's really uh, fulfilling for me, uh, having known many of these people and in some cases work with them. And we're a full service comprehensive program. We have lithography, uh, relief, intaglio, uh, and screen printing uh, all together. Some, most, uh, many shops and many university shops have winnowed down to a couple of mediums at best and, um, you know, struggle. So we're fortunate that we've been able to maintain a, a, a wide variety of what we can offer and instruct and uh, we're, we're comprehensive in that sense. Uh, we've also had many students go on to work at other major shops, New York City and Santa Monica, um, uh, so uh, we, f we feel that we offer a superior uh, form of education that they're going to be very well rounded uh, when they leave here in terms of their, their discipline and their knowledge of their discipline. So, um, Also at Kent, uh, we incorporate the Blossom program every summer in printmaking, uh, which is really exciting, a two week long intensive program uh, inviting uh, other professionals in the media to come uh, speak and to interact with students on a very open and honest way. Uh, it's, kind of, uh, it's a time where students can get feedback uh, from other professionals that don't have a necessary investment in them, provide them honest feedback and criticism on their work. Uh, also, we have the New York trip every uh, semester where we go to, I've established a huge connection of networks uh, in New York uh, in various print shops from Brand X Editions to uh, the Lower East Side print shop to uh, Van Deb editions, a number of places that uh, host our students, show them new works that are being made in New York, and talk about the new uh, processes and techniques they're using in, in shops across um, uh, Manhattan. So that's, that's really exciting. You don't get that in many art schools, and I think that really sets us apart. So. summer for the past 46 years, Kent State's Hugh A. Glasser School of Music has partnered with the Cleveland Orchestra for an intensive five-week festival of study of chamber music for college-age students. The students who must audition to partake in this amazing opportunity come from all over the globe, and I'm talking Europe, Asia, South America, as well as from all over the United States. And they come here to study on our campus with our world-class faculty. The list of alumni from this program is really, truly astounding. These musicians have gone on to serve as world-class performers in some of the most highly regarded orchestras and symphonies in the world including the Cleveland Orchestra, which employs dozens of Kent Blossom Music Festival alumni. Thanks to the Coolest Foundation, this past summer, Kent Blossom Music Festival played host to an extra special guest performer, the highly esteemed clarinetist, David Schifrin. Here, Mr. Schifrin performs the Poulenc Sonata for clarinet and piano, with award-winning pianist Spencer Meyer. I hope you enjoy this special treat. I know our audiences definitely did.
The School of Art graduate program at Kent State is the only one of its kind here in Northeast Ohio and was ranked by U.S. News & World Report as 82nd in the nation for nationally recognized graduate programs. Recently, a handful of our graduate students were invited to show their work at, at the gallery of the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation. The exhibit features our program's up-and-coming artists representing a variety of mediums. The exhibit, up through December 12th, includes sculpture, painting, printmaking, and textile art, all created by Kent State graduate students. Here are some of our students giving some insight into the thought and creativity behind their works during the opening of the exhibit. Welcome to the Margaret Clark Morgan Gallery. I'm Brenda Schneider. Tonight we're at the opening reception for Kent State University graduate students' exhibition. All of the artwork that's done in the gallery tonight is by students who are studying for their Masters in Fine Arts. Each one of them who is here tonight is going to talk a little bit about the piece of work that they have in this show. And by the way, the show goes through December 12th. We're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. I hope you can find time to come and visit. My name is Katherine Schenko. I am a graduate student at the Kent State University School of Art. Currently, I'm in my second year of study for a Master's of Fine Arts degree in textiles. I have a graduate assistantship with the Director of Galleries, Anderson Turner, and part of my job is to curate shows across Northeast Ohio. This show features 13 graduate students from the Kent State University School of Art, including me. Um, some are painters, some are printmakers, some are textile artists. There's a wide variety of pieces, and most of the pieces are for sale. Um, coming into graduate school, <clears throat> uh, a lot of the work I was creating had to do with kind of aging, uh, deteriorating old cities, especially like Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Detroit. And so this is kind of representative of one of the first pieces that I created there uh, in graduate school. <clears throat> and I was looking at uh, kind of the, the infrastructure that is left behind as a result of flight. Uh, people leaving, the populations leaving the kind of the, the big cities to some of the outer suburbs. Um, and so, uh, and that compared to um, kind of what I see as kind of a fragile economy of that the, the newer suburbs are based on. And so, um, so I made a glass sawhorse that represents that kind of that fragile, that fra fragility of that, the, the suburban economies. Um, and, but it's still strong enough to kind of break the larger urban cores. So it's a cast glass, and so it's actually um, small pieces of glass that are placed in a larger mold that's heated up to a high temperature. That glass flows into the mold, fill, fills in kind of this empty spaces. Same idea as, um, it doesn't seem like casting plastic or just like if you're buying a toy. I created a mold, and I created each, essentially each board individually, and then they're all glued together. It's, it was representative of a house. Um, I was told to stretch it out. A lot of people see it as kind of like a barn or like a covered bridge. It's kind of more country. It was in, intended to be more urban, but um, it's an urban warehouse, um, but it's steel. It's, well, it's welded steel, and when I welded it, it was welded perfectly, and then I had my advisor take his backhoe and slam it from the back side, from the bottom side, in to kind of represent that, that crush. Hi, I'm Liz. Um, I'm a textile artist. I've been working with fabric and yarns for most of my life. I'm concerned with and interested in our dependence on the natural world, the trees around us, how they clean the air and the land and how it creates our food. And um, I find it interesting that even as we become far removed from the land, we're living in these sterilized homes with air conditioning and we're buying our food packaged, that we are still very dependent every day from every second on the land and the world and the earth around us. I got started working with books because they're just a wealth of information, visual and written. But I'm more interested in the visual and for the, the visual 
knowledge that can be revealed. Uh, but it actually revolved from, came from books are becoming digital and there's a lot of people just don't want their books anymore. They don't want to carry 1,500 pounds of books when they move or go on vacation. They don't want to take the physical book. So they're kind of becoming a, a lost, maybe like an artifact. And when I approach my books, I think of excavating ground, searching for artifacts, and then the images that I come across are my artifacts. And I suggest, I, I go through and I find stuff that I want. I take cues from each page, layer by layer, just trying to figure out what, what can go with this area, how this can play off of this. So there's a lot of chance, there's a lot of, a lot of mistakes that can happen, and there's a lot of, a lot of time to think will this piece actually work? As a textiles artist, my work is about using traditional techniques like embroidering, weaving, cross-stitching, hand sewing, latch hooking, to talk about contemporary subject matter, the family unit, behavioral norms, the differences between men and women, and how technology is changing the way we conduct relationships with one another. Textiles has long been regarded in its history as a domestic art, important only in the realms of craft and hobby. By using traditional techniques and materials in unconventional ways to talk about socially relevant issues, my hope is to elevate the art of textiles so that it can be recognized as a legitimate form of fine art in itself, the same way that other disciplines like painting and sculpture and etc. are. In this piece, an eyeless dog with an oversized jaw bears his teeth in rage. He is unmistakably vicious. The lurid yellows and pinks, along with an odd pixelated look, adds to the surrealism of the image. But why has this image been cross-stitched? Mm -hmm. Cross-stitching is an art primarily associated with domesticity, and dogs are domesticated animals. But in some homes, the wild animal inside the dog comes out and leaves the household hostage. This piece is about domestic dysfunction, about how, under the pleasant facade of the middle American home, there oftentimes lurks an otherworldly horror. A lot of my art is like that, contrasting the beauties of color, thread, and cloth with the realities of things. I'm Joanne Arnett, for anyone who has not, I haven't had the privilege of meeting, and this is my piece, um, 18 months with time out for good behavior. This is hand woven, I work on a jacquard loom, um, and the materials, I'm starting with the photograph, and the materials are the same that you would find in, in a photograph, the um, metals of the emulsion and the fibers of the paper, I've just the same way I'm trying to explode that moment, explode those materials, and then rebuild it. Um, and so the, the idea, you know, if you're familiar with the daguerreotype, those old, um, there's, you can hold this moment in your hand, and it's, you have this very intimate contact with the image, shifting back and forth. And by blowing up these pieces and rebuilding them, 
again, I'm trying to make that connection with the person in there, create that intimacy. When you move, it changes. Suddenly, you're actively involved with this person. Through the process of weaving allows me to do that, allows me to build this image um, on this large scale. A special thank you to the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation for supporting a vibrant and enriching society by increasing awareness and engagement by the general public in the arts. That's this month's episode of Bravo Kent State Arts. For programming information within all of our schools, including art, fashion, music, theater and dance, and the Kent State University Museum, please visit www.kent.edu slash arts college. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>